welcome in this module we will discuss about workload management amazon redshift wlm enables users to flexibly manage priorities within workloads so that short fast running queries won't get stuck in queues behind long running queries amazon redshift wlm creates query queues at run time when you run a query wlm assigns the query to a queue according to the users user group or by matching a query group that is listed in the queue configuration with a query group label that the user sets at run time by default amazon redshift configures one queue with a concurrency level of 5 which enables up to 5 queues to run concurrently plus one predefined super user queue with a concurrency level of 1 you can define up to 8 queues and you can configure up to 50 queues 50 concurrency levels the maximum total concurrency level for all user defined queues should not exceed 50 each queue is allocated a portion of the cluster's available memory you can issue a query from any client be it from the workbench or maybe any bi tool or data analytics teams the query will hit the database and fetch the data for you what if you have multiple clients one of our etl job will be issuing a query to insert the data one from bi team will be retrieving the data and the data science team will be hitting the data and many other clients will be hitting your data now the load on redshift will be so huge in such case we can create query queues there will be one super user query queue which can run one query at a time and it will be created by default by redshift with one queue and one query slot inside it and with some memory allocated for that so if there are any long running queries or queries stuck in queue which are actually hampering the queue or anything then the admin can take this super user queue and kill those queries now in this example i am just showing how to create etl queue with five concurrency level and reporting queue with five concurrency level so my etl jobs will have will be having enough memory and five queues to run my queries and reporting have enough memory and five queries to read from redshift you can configure the following values like the concurrency level user group query group memory and the time out for any query or to hop a query and you can monitor the rules of the query queries in a queue run concurrently until they reach the wlm query slot count or concurrency level defined for that queue in our example the etl queue has five concurrency level and reporting as five so any queue any query which comes beyond this will be waiting in the queue and when it finds some space then it will run each queue can be configured for up to 50 query slots the maximum wlm query slot count for all user defined queues is 50 the limit includes the default queue but doesn't include the reserved super user queue by default wlm queues have a concurrency level of 5 as a best practice redshift recommend using a total query slot count of 15 or lower you can assign a set of user group to a queue by specifying each user group name or by using wild cards when a member of a listed user group runs a query the query runs in the corresponding queue there is no set limit on the number of user groups that can be assigned to a queue let's go and practically implement this create a user with your username and set a password and create a group here i am creating an etl group using the command and you can check the list of users and groups by using the following commands on the screen if wildcards are enabled in the wlm queue configuration you can assign user groups and query groups to a queue either individually or by using unix shell style wildcards the pattern matching is case insensitive for example the wildcard character matches any number of characters so if you are add db and square asterisk to the list of user groups for a queue then any query that is run by a user that belong to a group with the name that begins with db and square such as db and square admin or db and square primary is assigned to the queue 
the question mark wild card character matches any single character so if the queue includes user group dba question mark 1 then user groups name dba11 and dba21 would match but dba12 would not match white cards are disabled by default wlm memory percent to use by default each user defined queue is allocated an equal portion of the memory that is available for user defined queries for example if you have four user defined queues each queue is allocated 25% of the available memory the super user queue has its own allocated memory and cannot be modified to change the allocation you assign an integer percentage of memory to each queue up to a total of 100% any unallocated memory is managed by amazon redshift and can be temporarily given to a queue if the queue requests additional memory for processing to limit the amount of time that queries in a given wlm queue are permitted to use you can set the wlm timeout value for each queue the timeout parameter specifies the amount of time in milliseconds that amazon redshift waits for a query to execute before either cancelling or hopping the query The timeout is based on query execution time and doesn't include time spent waiting in a queue. WMLM timeout doesn't apply to a queue query that has reached the returning state. Copy statements and maintenance operations such as analyze and vacuum are not subject to WLM timeout. WLM query queue hopping. When a query is hopped, WLM attempts to route the query to the next matching queue based on the wlm queue assignment rules if the query doesn't match any other queue definitions the query is cancelled it's not it's not assigned to the default queue wlm hops the following types of queries when they time out read only queries such as select statements that are in a wlm state of running to find the wlm state of a query view the state column on the stv wlm query state system table we'll see that sql commands to see the queries in the following session create table as statements wlm query hopping supports both user defined and system generated create table as statements select into statements these queries can be hopped queries that aren't subject to wlm timeout continue running in the original queue until completion the following types of queries aren't subject to wlm timeout copy statements maintenance operations such as analyze and vacuum read only queries such as select statements that have reached a wlm state of returning to find the wlm state of query view the state column on the stv wlm query state system table queries that aren't eligible for hopping by wlm timeout are cancelled when the time out the following types of queries are not eligible for hopping by wlm time out the insert statements update and delete statements the unload commands and the user defined functions implementing workload management select workload management in your redshift console and select the parameter group or you can create one by using parameter groups and click on add queue then you can add queues by default there'll be one queue with concurrency level of 5 here in this window i just added queue 1 and enabled short query acceleration uh, and set the user groups as etl this enabling short query accelerations will run fast running queries which can return the value into 1 to 20 seconds without making them wait in the queue so once you have enabled the wlm you can run this command and see and you can monitor the default queue the super user queue and other queues by running this query see here the result of query would be like this you have the queues 0 1 2 9 and 10 one is a super user and an etl queue of 1 and default of 2 and the queue 9 is for short running queries and 10 is a system queue 
and you can run this following query to see the memory allocated and number of slots each query has all the service classes are the system queries and the service class of 5 is a super user 6 and 7 are the ones we created etl in reporting and 14 is a short query short running query you can run these commands to analyze how the queries are running in queues you can analyze the table design hash dist key indicates whether the table has distribution key one indicates a key exists zero indicates there is no key for example nation does not have a distribution key in the previous example let's see the example once see here in this table you have all the columns and you can see the fourth fifth line where you are mentioning encoding as y then one if there is no encoding you are returning zero you can verify if a table has sort key or not has sort key indicates whether the table has a sort key one indicates a key exists zero indicates there is no key if a table column has encoding or not you can verify it by seeing the column has column encoding in a similar way the data may be skewed into one slice so you can check that by using the variable ratio skew across slices and percentage slices populated you can see that by using that comma variable run write and run this statement then you can easily monitor the size of the table column the size of the table whether it has a distribution key sort key encoding or percentage of slice populated on the skewness and maximum blocks per slice and others so tables for which there is significant data distribution skew will have either a large value in the ratio skew across slice column or a small value in the percentage slice populated column this indicates that you have not chosen an appropriate distribution key column thank you